All hail, littlest dickers, Gary Duplicitus. <laughs> All fail, more like. <laughs> That's the title. Alright, time for com. I like his new intro. <laughs> Very smooth. Alright, time for com. Whoa. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. Yay. Anyway. So, this is example three. Yeah, probably the worst example yet. Um, um, demonstrating that the kinetic energy theory... Blah, 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 blah. Um, 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 um you know. You know. <laughs> so, this is a, a Mythbusters episode where they basically proved one half mv squared... Uh, it's a good episode. It's a bad episode. It's a good episode. It's a bad episode. Pretty good experiment. Bad episode. Bad science. It's a good episode. It's a pretty good experiment. Bad science. Photons are really huge. They're, they're, they're tiny little dots. They have no size. Photons are really huge. Tiny. They have no size. Huge. Tiny. Th huge. Tiny thing. Really huge. It's tiny little. No size. Photons are really huge. Bad episode. It's a good episode. Pretty good experiment. Bad Bad science. You've taken an object, moving it twice the speed. But they did not do that. They got it wrong. They dropped from the wrong height. Check it. I will be swinging this car into the wall. Let me repeat that bit. Slow down because you almost missed it. It was only there for a flash. Into the wall. What you need to observe is that 49 degree mark. 49 degrees is the wrong angle to determine a quarter height in relation to the 90 degree mark. The 49 degree mark gives a 3 to 1 ratio instead of a 4 to 1 ratio. Therefore their V1 was far too fast. It totally invalidates all their clay experiments, which weren't even being done correctly anyway because you're supposed to measure volume displacement if you were trying to measure kinetic energy. 49 is too high for V1. It should have been 41 degrees for V1. If 90 is V2, then 49 is the wrong height. The experiment pretty much proves the case. Pretty much proves the case that Gary's a nutcase. So it's a pretty, like I said, it's a pretty good experiment. It's a good episode. It's a bad episode. It's a good episode. It's a bad episode. Pretty good experiment. Bad episode. Bad science. It's a good episode. It's a pretty good experiment. Bad science. It's a pretty, like I said, it's a pretty good experiment. No, it's a diabolical experiment. It's a wrong experiment. It's not even a close experiment. It could not be more wrong. Pillock. Now, for whatever reasons, Mythbusters chose to use angles 49 degrees and 90 degrees to express the height of the drop. I've marked these up for you. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees. That drop height would be 1 centimetre, 3.5 centimetres, 9 centimetres, 16.5 centimetres, 18 centimetres. That's the height I say it should have been, thereabouts anyway. 24.5 centimetres is the one that they chose. That's a third of that height, isn't it? I mean, did you not notice that, Gary? That that, 49 degrees, which is marked on their board very clearly, have a close look. They've gone to the trouble of marking it in tape, yellow tape. 49 degrees. 49 degrees is the wrong angle to determine a quarter height in relation to the 90 degree mark. The 49 degree mark gives a 3 to 1 ratio instead of a 4 to 1 ratio. Therefore, their V1 was far too fast. It totally invalidates all their clay experiments, which weren't even being done correctly anyway because you're supposed to measure volume displacement if you were trying to measure kinetic energy. Displace a certain amount of clay in accordance with all the academic ways of measuring kinetic energy using clay. William Jacob Graf Sande, he dropped a brass sphere from varying heights into a bed of soft clay. He measured the volume of the impact craters. He measured the volume of the impact craters. The volume, the volume, the volume, Gary, not the depth. He measured the volume of the impact craters. It's all about measuring how much clay you displace, not how deep it goes. You have to measure how much clay you've displaced. First of all, let's do the low one. Let's just be level with this height here. 
the front of the ball has got to be at that height. So that was that was that, okay. Show that camera as well. That was that. Now I'll turn it around and do it from a bigger height. So the front of the ball now has to be level with that height. Is that clear? Show the other camera. Yes. So we then measure the displacement in millilitres. Now that should be four to one, not two to one, which Mythbusters got. Hopefully the camera can see that it's level. I'm just trying to make it as honest as possible. And then that measures, in this case, we have left at eight and a quarter. So let the camera see, eight and a quarter millilitres left. So that means that holds one and three quarters, isn't it? One and three quarters, okay. So I'll fill this up again to 10. Like that. I think that's about it. It's nice and level, isn't it? So that's now measuring two and three quarter left. Isn't it? So two and three quarters left, that means it's used. So that's seven and a quarter. Can you see that? Seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter. Try to pretend with a pair of scissors. Seven point two five and one point seven five. Making sure the camera can see that, okay? So in other words, that had four times the amount of energy of that. Yeah, it should have been seven, seven shouldn't it? Not 7.25. But that's the result that Mythbusters should have got. So now the next test, I'll do it from the height that Mythbusters said it should have been. So now I do it with the black one. Make sure it's pressed up against the iron so it's got a nice solid base, yes. This time I need to drop from the 49. So I've got to get the front of the ball level with that height there. You ready? Show you that. Show, Show that, that camera. camera. Okay. Show that camera. And now I do from four times that height, properly four times that height now. A bit taller than me, so I'm a bit... I'm going to struggle a little bit to get it exact, but I felt that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Here's the other camera. But again, you can see it's four times the, the displacement, isn't it? It's not twice the displacement, it's four times the displacement. Because it took four times as much energy to do that from twice the velocity, twice velocity, four times the height. Milk, lights, camera, action. I think that's level, right? If I do any more, I think it might overflow. Show this camera that it looks level. And the amount level left in there is now just over seven and a half. It's about 2.4. So that's more than before, isn't it? It was 1.75 last time, wasn't it? So if Mythbusters have been using that blue X times two mark, coupled with that one I've just measured there, the black X, 49 degree mark, 2.4 times four should have been uh, 9.6. And instead it came out at 7.25. So it would have been under measuring, even if they'd have been using the proper, the academic way of measuring the kinetic energy, the way that Emily du Chatelet and Wilhelm Grazan used. And all the academics all use displacement methods. So this should be four times that, shouldn't it? Oh, so it's just over. It's just started to overflow there. Okay, so so I'll knock a tiny bit off for that. So we've got one point four milliliters left in the syringe. Yes. I'll cut it one and three quarters. Just taking into account the overflow, I've knocked a bit off for the overflow. So that'll be eight, eight point two five. So it's a bit under what it should be, but eight point two five. Eight point two five, two point four.
it's more accurate than what Mythbus has achieved. Okay, so I think I'll switch this camera off for the moment and that one off as well. Thank you for watching. I'll post the full video separately because not everybody's interested in seeing the whole experiment. So I've just rushed through, showed you little clips. Now, for anybody who actually is interested in the signs, obviously not Gary, uh, here is some superimposed images of my experiment that you've just seen clips of and uh, Mythbusters original experiment. I've laid them over one another, lined them up exactly so you can see that I've not cheated that 49 degree mark. It's exactly the same as theirs. So they did use the wrong height. Instead of four times higher, they used three times higher. Totally ruins the experiment. Totally invalidates all Gary's claims, all Parry Poly Logic's claims. It makes it a laughable mess. But I'm not surprised. Just look how they did the experiment. They've got the weight inside a tin can. <laughs> it looks posh until you get close up. It's typical TV shenanigans, isn't it? Yes, in the top left hand corner, you can see uh, that my pivot that I've used to uh, sweep an arc. Look at their yellow vertical line uh, just, just near the left. That goes up to their pivot point and it perfectly lines up with mine. You can see, yes. Okay, right. And now look at the curves. Their yellow tape and my curve marked in pen. You can see that the curves perfectly align with one another. You can see their curve marked in yellow tape and my curve marked in pen, which goes exactly down the center of that yellow tape mark. Okay, okay. Now look at their, look at their 49 degree mark that they've written in yellow tape. Might not be that visible because green, yellow against green doesn't show up too well. But you can see uh, three quarters to the right of the screen, it's marked 49 degrees. And there's my, where I've written it in, on a yellow sticker, 49. And observe that the two of them line up perfectly, okay? Uh, my 49, their 49, okay? Line up perfectly. And looking at mine again, to the left of that, the blue X and the blue tape shows the correct height that they should have been doing it from. Instead of the red height, you know, the 49 degree mark, it should have been 41 degrees, the blue height. Yes, because that really is a quarter of the height of the X2 height. You can see I've marked in yellow 90, 90 degrees. They also marked 90 on theirs, but that isn't in shot at the moment because there's, there's someone standing in front of it. So there's a clear view that they did use the wrong mark, the wrong height. The 49 degree mark makes it only one third of the height of the X2. In other words, when they said they were dropping it from twice the velocity X2, it wasn't because it needed to be that red tape length again, an extra height above that X2 mark for it to be genuinely four times the height, which then does give twice the velocity. I'm only criticizing this part of their experiment where they seemed quite thrilled that they'd got supposedly two times the energy <laughs> indicated by the compression of the clay, when that couldn't possibly be the correct result when they'd been dropping it from the wrong height anyway. If their intention was to compare the kinetic energy in both cases, then they then they went about it the wrong way because the Emily du Châtelet Wilhelm Gravesend way is to measure displacement of the clay, not merely squashing it and seeing how much it flattens out. That's going to give inaccurate results for all manner of reasons and not worth going into here because it's not a linear function. It doesn't compress in a linear fashion. If you compress it one inch at velocity one, then you're not going to compress it at four inches at velocity two because it becomes increasingly hard to compress it the greater the area you've compressed plus mythbusters didn't allow enough clay to allow four times extra depth anyway they only allowed enough clay to just about measure twice the amount of clay compression anyway so that biased the experiment in favor of the wrong result anyway but everybody knows that the correct result if you are measuring kinetic energy using clay then the results should be you get four times the displacement of the clay at v2 twice the velocity unfortunately they weren't actually even using v2 
because they, they've made a mistake with the angles, the heights of V1 relative to V2, okay? 